There are a few questions that come up time and time again in relation to electronic drums in various groups, forums and comment sections online. I thought that it might be useful to have a single video that focuses on the most common of these questions, partly just so that the people who answer them all of the time could get a little bit of relief. I'm Luke, this is the eDrum Workshop and if you're new to electronic drums or you're just unsure about a few aspects of them, Hopefully this Q&A will point you in the right direction for some of these common problems. So first off, one question that I see come up on nearly a daily basis is can I use a felt kick drum beater on a mesh kick drum pad? Or sometimes it's phrased more like, will felt ruin my mesh head? Generally speaking, if you use a felt beater directly on a mesh head so the felt is touching the bare mesh, it will either wear it down or it will tear it. There have been many photos online like these where the person posting is furious that their mesh head has a hole in it after a month or so of use. And the comment section will be very quick to point out that you are probably using a felt beater on the mesh head. When the felt beater makes contact with the bare mesh, and there is a reason that I keep saying bare mesh that will become obvious in a minute, the fibers in the felt will effectively start unpicking the weave of the mesh. At least that's my understanding of how it's working. Now there is every chance that this won't happen to you, there'll usually be at least one comment in there saying that they've used felt on their mesh head for the last 20 years and here's a picture to show it looks brand new. And cool, that's great, I'm glad that it's working for you but you're one of the lucky ones. The amount of photos and stories you see about it online and even my own past experience tells me that this is not a made up problem and it's very likely to happen. However, there are a couple of really simple solutions. The first of which is to use a plastic beater this won't cause the same kind of abrasion on the mesh and you won't have that problem anymore or if you don't want to change beaters put a patch on the mesh head like you might do on an acoustic drum. This way you can pretty much use any beater that you want. This is basically something that I would recommend no matter what, whether it's an acoustic drum or an electronic drum, put a patch on it and it's going to save you some headaches. One thing to keep in mind though is that not every single patch is made equally. Some patches don't stick to mesh as well as other ones do, but generally speaking I've heard people having success with either Remo or Evans patches. Personally, I really like these Evans EQ patches, the uh, EQ PB2. It's a nylon patch and I recommended it in a video a while ago, uh, six useful electronic drum tools. They also make a single pedal version if you don't play double kick. I really like the feel of this patch in particular, however, it is better to still use this patch with a plastic beater rather than felt. It actually kind of has the inverse problem where the nylon can start wearing down the felt on the beater. They do make a clear plastic version of this patch as well or another of the solid options like the Remo for Lamb Slam might work better for you if you want to keep using a felt beater. Another kick drum pad that can be a little bit confusing is the Roland KD-10 pad. This pad looks like it's got a mesh head but it's actually a different material, it's more of like a cloth kind of fabric and I believe that Roland say it's fine to use felt on this pad. Personally if I was going to use one permanently I'd probably put a patch on it anyway. A patch will increase the longevity of pretty much any head so why not? The next question that comes up quite a lot is do I need to use nylon tipped sticks on my electronic drums? And quite simply no, you can use wooden tipped sticks on your drums if you prefer. I've used wood tipped sticks for years at home, at the workshop, at gigs and I've had no problems with them but no matter what your stick choice there's a couple of things that you might need to keep in mind. One thing that I see come up quite often is the idea that your mesh heads will wear down your wooden tips kind of like sandpaper, and for years I didn't agree with this, much like a lot of people don't agree that felt will chew up a mesh head, because I'd never seen it happen to my own drumsticks. However, recently I reviewed the Jebeki Prestige 3-ply mesh heads, which are great heads, you should go check them out, and after I'd finished the review, I actually noticed some wear on my drumsticks. So I don't know how well this will come out on camera, but there is a bit of a difference in colour, not sure if you're going to be able to see it and also the coating has come off a little bit because of the end wearing down and I'm going to stop doing that because that will get photoshopped. So yeah I was a little bit shocked to be honest it's not something I'd seen before but it's also not doing it anymore. So what I think's happened is that some of the heads when they arrived were ever so slightly rougher than the other ones. And this is what's caused the sticks to wear down a little bit, but over time the heads seem to have smoothed back out and they all feel pretty much the same to the touch now, 
and now my sticks aren't wearing down anymore. So that makes me wonder if maybe that's the reason that some people experience this and others don't. And the other stick related thing to keep in mind is actually in regards to the nylon tips. A lot of people swear by nylon tipped sticks on their electronic drums and if it's working for you that's great, stick with it, but sometimes those nylon tips aren't perfectly smooth on the edge. This is very unlikely to be a problem at all on acoustic drums but with a mesh head there's always a chance that that could snag the mesh. I've heard that the super simple solution to this is just getting a bit of fine sandpaper and sanding the end down so that it's smooth. And this is the same reason that you should try to avoid using the same sticks that you've used on acoustic drums on your electronic drums if you have mesh heads. Any possible rough patches on your sticks could potentially snag the mesh head. Another couple of questions that come up quite regularly are related to maintenance and cleaning of your electronic drums. So what can I use to clean rubber cymbals and how can I clean my mesh heads? The easiest answer is that you really don't need to, it's entirely cosmetic, but I'm not going to lie, I like to do it and I know that many other people do too. So for rubber cymbals and rubber rims, the general go to is 303 aerospace protectant. I use this quite a lot and it does basically make your cymbals look like they're new from the factory. It's not the easiest thing to get hold of in every territory, I could only get it from Amazon myself in the UK, however it is worth seeking out if you can get it. Also the same brand make a few other kinds of cleaners and different products so it's not those that you want, it's the aerospace protectant. You just follow the instructions on the back minus the recommendation for their multi-surface cleaner and the cymbals come out great. And for mesh heads personally I just use a bit of washing powder or some dish soap and some hot water with a light scouring pad or sponge. This will easily clean the majority of marks off a mesh head but just make sure that you're not using something too abrasive to scrub it because that's when you might end up snagging like with the other things we've talked about. I've also read quite a few accounts of people saying they've got good results by putting their mesh heads in the dishwasher. I've never tried this myself but if it works, it works. If you want to see a full video on my cleaning process for cymbals and mesh heads, let me know down in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Another topic that comes up a lot in the e-drum space is the topic of amplification. So questions like, what is the best drum amp for my budget of X dollars, pounds or euros? And should I buy a Roland amp or a PA, etc. First off, if you're just playing at home, personally I would recommend just investing in either a decent pair of headphones or in-ear monitors. The problem with reproducing electronic drums is that they've got a really, really wide frequency range. Everything from the really low subs to the really sparkly highs. A lot of the cheaper speaker systems just aren't cut out for the job. I also see a lot of people asking if they can get away with a guitar amp or a bass amp and personally I really wouldn't recommend it. Those amps have been designed specifically around the frequency ranges of those instruments so a guitar amp will typically be very mid-rangey and not really have much going on in the bass or the treble and a bass amp will be very bass heavy, maybe have some mids but really not much in the way of highs. Again this is another area where somebody might chirp in and say that they've been running their kit through a bass amp and it sounds amazing but once again my answer to that would be I'm I'm glad that it works for them but it's probably not going to work for most people. A decent keyboard amp might be a little bit more up to the task because they cover a much wider frequency range but if you did want to go that route I would highly recommend testing that speaker out before purchasing it just in case. So there are a few speakers nowadays that are being marketed as drum amps and some of them, the cheapest small single speaker ones, mostly sound like garbage from what I've heard. Some of the other newer ones like the Simmons ones and the Alesis ones that have come out appear to be an active PA speaker that's been labelled as a drum amp. And basically PA speakers are what I would recommend for amplification of an electronic drum kit. Now I'm by no means a speaker expert so take the next bit with a pinch of salt but this is what's worked for me. I would generally recommend going for a 15 inch speaker because this will give you good bass replication. You might get away with a decent quality 12 inch one but again you'd probably want to test it and personally I use a pair of DB Technologies Opera 15 inch active speakers. They do a pretty good job in my opinion. I only really used to use one on stage for a little bit of monitoring just so the band could hear me and I'm not going to pretend they're perfect, they're a little bit hot on the mid range and because I don't have a sub you don't get right down to the lowest bass frequencies. But they sound decent and they do all the things that I need them to do. And there's two different kinds of speakers that you can generally get, you've got active 
speakers or passive speakers. Passive PA speakers are generally cheaper, but you do need to pair them up with a power amp, whereas the active speakers have their power built into them. There's pros and cons to both approaches. But one of the main things to keep in mind with any form of amplification is that they're not going to sound the same as your headphones. PA speakers and amps need to move a lot of air and their speakers are a lot bigger than the ones that are found in your headphones, so the sound will never be as focused as even a pretty cheap pair of headphones. I actually made a comparison video a while ago showing off some of the differences that you might expect to hear between your headphones and a PA. So go check that video out if you haven't seen it already if you want to hear that in action. If you want new kits or samples for your electronic drum module to take it to the next level, go check out my store at theedrumworkshop.com or there's also plenty of tutorials on this channel like this one that you can go check out. But above all, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!